A couple of weeks ago, I did a video on how you can secure Mozilla Firefox, how you can make Firefox or really any other browser more secure by enabling or disabling a few settings in your browser, maybe adding a few plugins. And I did have a couple of people ask me to do the same kind of video about securing your email client, such as Mozilla Thunderbird. And I will discuss a few things you can do in Thunderbird or any email client to make it a little more secure. But there's something you have to understand when we're talking about email security is that email is a security nightmare. Email is inherently insecure. It probably always will be inherently insecure. It's because email dates back to the very early days of the Internet. When email was designed... It was designed without security or privacy in mind because back then the internet was such a small place, very few people used the internet. They didn't even consider things like security or privacy when they created email. So exactly what are the threats out there regarding email? Well, the threats with email are really a lot of the same threats regarding browsing the web. So we're talking about things like ransomware, phishing attacks, spoofing, spam, keyloggers, Trojans, viruses, you know, those sorts of things. So let me pull up Thunderbird here on my desktop and uh, show you some of my email. Now, the first thing you need to do to secure your email is really you want your email to be delivered in plain text. You don't want any HTML. You don't want any what they call rich text emails. You don't want any remote content. You don't want any of that stuff. It needs to be like it was 30 years ago where email was strictly plain text. For example, this email I just got uh, from Brave Software, you know, the Brave web browser, uh, letting me know about, uh, I guess, a donation I received. You see... Thunderbird, by default, is blocking some remote content, some remote images. Now, I trust Brave, so I don't mind showing, you know, some remote content from Brave. I get a, a lot of messages from Mastodon practically all the time, you know, I get. And all these messages from Mastodon are publicly posted on Mastodon, so I don't mind showing them. But you see the remote content from Mastodon includes, you know, things like images. When you get emails from big retailers, Amazon, eBay, you know, typically it's got a lot of remote content. You're seeing images of products they're trying to sell you. And really, email should just be plain text. You don't really need images. You don't need formatting with CSS. You don't need JavaScript. You don't need any kind of remote content. You don't need to be connecting to a remote server, you know, in order to read your email. Email should just be plain text. If you introduce all this other stuff into your email, the images and the CSS, you know, any kind of code that's being executed when you're reading your email, you are opening yourself up for attack. So an email client such as Thunderbird, but any email client, it really doesn't matter. What I would do is in Thunderbird, you go to this tab here called View. Then go down to Message Body. How do you want your messages to be delivered? Do you want them to be in the original HTML? You know, the rich HTML where I get all the images and whiz bang and whatever. Do you want to do a simple HTML or do you want to do plain text? Now, plain text is definitely the way you want to go. You see how much different that email is once I enabled it as plain text. And to be honest, it's cleaner. It's easier to read. There is no reason to do HTML email or what some services called rich text email. Just disable all that stuff. Plain text is all you need. The other thing you want to make sure to disable if it is enabled is if in Thunderbird, go to your menu here, click on it and go down to preferences and preferences again. Go down to the privacy tab. There is this checkbox here that says allow remote content in messages. Make sure that is unchecked. You do not want any remote content loading in your email. That, again, is just opening yourself up for attack. Now, let me close out Thunderbird. There are some other things you want to keep in mind. Most of the people that are going to try to attack you with email are not going to do it by trying to sneak in with a, a virus or a keylogger or something like that. Typically, the most common ways people try to attack you via email is through phishing attacks. A phishing attack, basically, they're trying to get sensitive data from you, sensitive information about yourself or some of your accounts online. 
And a lot of times they send out these really cool emails that look very official, like from your bank or you know, credit union or whatever. And it's just some scammer that sent you the email. He's hoping you give him, you know, sensitive information like your social security number or your date of birth or anything like that. And what really helps out these phishing attacks is so much of our information is freely available online. Most people can't get to birth dates and social, but most people can get your full name, people know where you live, people might be able to figure out your year of birth. So they come at you with these emails and they give you some information about yourself. So it makes it seem like, well, they might be, you know, a guy from the bank that I bank with. But really, it's just some clown in Nigeria, you know, trying to get you to feed him some information that way you know, he can clear out your bank account or your PayPal account or whatever it is he's trying to get at. So how do you protect yourself from these phishing attacks? Assume everything is a hoax. Don't believe anything that you receive via email. If anybody is asking for any kind of personal information at all in an email, assume it's a hoax and just delete it. And some of you may be wondering, well, if it's what if it's something really happened, you know, at my bank or my work or, you know, whoever's contacting you via email. These people probably have a phone number. And if it was a serious situation, they probably would call you. They probably wouldn't send an email. Another common way attackers get in via email is they send a virus into your email through an attachment. So if you have a document sent to you via an attachment in an email, don't open it. Do not open that attachment. Don't download it and definitely don't execute it. So if you're running Windows and somebody's sending you, you know, a DLL or EXE or whatever it is, don't open it. Don't execute it. On Linux, we have less of these problems, but, you know, a Windows executable might execute on your system if you have Wine installed. So again, don't run that program. Definitely don't run any kind of random scripts. You know, if somebody sends you a Bash script, Python script, some JavaScript, definitely do not execute that. Another common way people send viruses as attachments is by disguising them as Word documents or Excel documents. So if somebody sends you a .doc or a .xls or whatever it is, if you don't recognize that person sending you the email, if you weren't expecting somebody to send you that office document, absolutely do not open that document. And if you have an antivirus program on your computer, you know, at least scan the documents before you open them if, if you feel like you really need to open that document. And yet another common way people attack you via email is through unsafe links. So they send you an email. Here's a link. Please click on it. And then you go to that website. And then that website is actually what's going to install the virus on your computer or execute this malicious code or try to hit you up with this phishing attack. Again, just just don't click any random link in email. Basically, you have to be smart when using email. And I don't mean that in a derogatory kind of way, like uh, you got you know, some people are just too dumb to use email. If you are gullible, if you're just going to click anything in an email or download anything sent to you in, in an email, then honestly, you might just not even use email. And, and I'm being serious because you again, there, there's a lot of evil people out there and they're just going to constantly send you this crap. And then once they get a hold of you, they're never going to let you go. So that was just, you know, some tips regarding email security. I showed you a little bit about securing Thunderbird or any desktop email client. But those of you that use webmail, things like Gmail, I'm sure Gmail has a setting to where you can force all your emails to be plain text. I strongly suggest you activate that. And then other than that, I mean, it, it's all dependent on you, the user. Assume every email is a scam. Never send anybody personal information via e email. Never open an attachment via an email unless you were expecting that attachment. And never click on any link in an email. Again, unless you were expecting that email from somebody and you know that that link is actually a legit link. Now, before I go, this episode was produced by Michael Mitchell, Chris, DJ Donnie, Dylan, George Haplow, Nate Lambda, Omri, Rob, Sean, and Willie. These guys, they are the producers of this show. They're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this show wouldn't have been possible and the channel really wouldn't be possible. 
All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. This channel is sponsored by you guys, the community. You'd like to help out, please consider donating. You'll find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.